The story begins with a girl named Sang Ji, a 14 years junior high school student. Sang Ji is smaller than her friends, but she's very smart and her academic grades are satisfactory. However, because she often daydreamed and didn't focus when the teacher was explaining lessons in class, her parents were often called to school. And when she gets into the same trouble for the umpteenth time, Sang Ji begs her older brother, Sang Yan, to come to her school. Sang Yan, who's currently studying at college, refuses and he's fed up because his younger sister often drags him into trouble. And because of that, he nicknames Sang Ji the Little Devil. Then Sang Ji cursed all the way home. However, when she arrived home, she got news from her mother that her brother had returned from the dormitory. Sang Ji happily prepared fruit for her brother, hoping that he would help her. However, she instead meets Du and Jiak Su, Sang Yan's very handsome friend. Sang Ji begged her brother to help her, but her sweet attitude no longer worked, and Sang Ji finally cried so that her brother would be scolded by their mother. But Sang Ji's efforts were in vain, so a desperate Sang Ji asked Du and Jiak Su to pretend to be her older brother and meet her teacher at school. Duan Jiak Su didn't refuse, but he also didn't give any certainty, which made Sang Ji wonder whether Duan Jiak Su really wanted to help her or not. Time passes, and now Sang Ji is a second year high school student. When Sang Yan moved to the main campus, he planned to move his belongings to the new dormitory, which turned out to be close to Sang Ji's school. After learning that Sang Yan will help to move his friend's things, Sang Ji offers to help, because she hopes to meet Duan Jiak Su. In the afternoon after school, when Sang Ji goes to help her brother, she finally sees Duan Jiak Shu after not seeing him for several years. Duan Jiak Shu almost doesn't recognize Sang Ji, because now she is all grown up and she looks very cute. Then Duan Jiak Shu took Sang Ji to his dormitory, and his roommates welcomed Sang Ji well. Before leaving for his part time job, Duan Jiak Shu tells Sang Ji that if she likes his fox doll, then Sang Ji can take it home. But Sang Ji is curious whether the doll was a gift from Duan Jiak Su's girlfriend. But fortunately, Jiak Su's friends explained that he was too busy working to find a girlfriend. And that day, Sang Ji accidentally left her book on Jiak Su's desk. When Jiak Su comes back, he borrows Sang Yan's cell phone to talk to Sang Ji about the book. Because Sang Ji had to complete her assignment in the book tomorrow, they agreed to meet at 6 a.m. and Jiak Su would accompany Sang Ji to do her homework before going to school. The next day, Sang Ji went to the place they had agreed on, and she waited anxiously for Jia Su. Sang Ji is worried whether he will come or not, just like when Sang Ji was in middle school. Sang Ji is so anxiously waiting for Jia Su to come to her school. In the past, Sang Ji was alone waiting in her seat after school. However, she did not see Jia Su coming. Because she was desperate, she went home mad and accidentally tripped. Then Jia Su appeared and grabbed Sang Ji. But Sang Ji complains that Jia Su came late and Jia Su immediately apologized to her, and they went to the teacher's office. Jia Su played his role well and listened to the teacher's complaints that Sang Ji always drew when the teacher was teaching in class. Her grades are good, but Sang Ji's teacher hoped her attitude when studying could be improved. However, Jia Su urged Sang Ji to apologize to her teacher, which ultimately made the meeting run well. Back to the present and Sang Ji thinks that Jia Su is late again. Therefore, she cursed Jiak Su over the phone, cursing that Jiak Su would never have a girlfriend in his entire life. But then Jiak Su surprised Sang Ji from behind. It turned out he came early and even gave Sang Ji a bottle of milk. After that, Jiak Su accompanied Sang Ji to do her homework at the bakery, and he also gave her a sweet cake. Sang Ji looked at Jiak Su several times while doing her homework, until finally she asked about Jiak Su's hometown and his vacation plans for the summer. Jiak Su just smiles and explains that he is from Ye Town and he tells Sang Ji to finish her homework quickly. Before Sang Ji went to school, Jiak Su put a piece of paper in her bag. Apparently, last night Jiak Su peeked at Sang Ji's book and read her writing, which stated that her brother was very annoying. Then Jiak Su creates his own narrative with a piece of paper and states that he is happy to see Sang Ji again. When she returned home, Sang Ji's heart pounded when she read the writing. Sang Ji was so happy. She folded the paper carefully and kept the bottle of the milk Jia Su gave her. Sang Ji can't drink it because she's allergic to milk, but she keeps the bottle. One day, Sang Ji's parents went to their friend's wedding. Sang Yan then invited his sister to go out to lunch with his friends. Sang Ji certainly didn't want to miss this opportunity to meet Jia Su. So she immediately dressed up as beautifully as possible. In the car, there was Kyan Fei, one of Sang Yan's roommates, and Jia Su looked sleepy because he was busy working. Sang Ji secretly watches Jia Su. Then Jiak Su, who realized this, asked Sang Ji why she always blushed when she saw him. This annoyed Sang Yan and Chan Fei, because it seemed that Jiak Su was a little narcissistic. But the way he flirts with girls is very old-fashioned and outdated, proving that he doesn't have much experience in love. 
Arriving at the mall, Sangji insists that she wants to stay in the car, all the way to the parking lot. But Sagyan told her to go out with the others. Sangji feels unwell and she goes to the toilet. At that time, Jiak Su saw that there was a blood stain on Sangji's skirt and he quickly walked behind her to cover the stain. Arriving at the toilet, Jiak Su asks Sangji to wait inside and says that he has somewhere to go. Sangji noticed there were blood stains on her skirt where she looked in the mirror and she felt very embarrassed. Meanwhile, Jiak Su immediately called Sang Yan. The two of them then bought sanitary napkins and a skirt for Sang Ji and asked a woman to take those things to the toilet. Sang Ji feels very embarrassed and hesitates to come out, but fortunately Jiak Su and Sang Yan agree to keep quiet about this incident. Thoughtfully, Jiak Su poured Sang Ji a glass of warm water. He also separates beef from Sang Ji's food, because Jiak Su knows she is allergic to it. After eating, Jiak Su helps Sang Ji play the claw doll machine. At that time, Sang Ji could hear her heart beating very fast, and she was even happier when Jiak Su got a doll for her. Sang Ji remembered the past. That time, after Jiak Su helped her at school, she almost cried when Jiak Su was about to call Sang Yan to report what happened to her. But Jiak Su gave up, and finally he took Sang Ji home while carrying her school bag. Sang Ji's cheeks were red throughout the way home. She felt very happy that day, just like how she felt now. One day, Sang Ji came to a cafe with her friend Jenru. She didn't expect that Jiak Su worked part-time in the cafe. On that day, Sang Ji overheard that Jiak Su's manager had paid his salary in advance, and it made Sang Ji wonder if Jiak Su was working part-time because he needs a lot of money. Sang Ji really wants to help him, but she can't do anything. After leaving the cafe, Sang Ji comes to a karaoke place to celebrate the birthday of her friend Zhen Chu, who apparently has liked Sang Ji since middle school. And that day, Zhen Chu wanted to confess his love to Sang Ji. However, Sang Jie firmly refused and made Zhen Chu cry. And apparently, Jiak Su saw it. He then advises Sang Ji on how to reject other people in a good way. After all, Zhen Chu had liked Sang Ji for a long time and Sang Ji has to respect him. It wouldn't be a good thing if Sang Ji rejected him by hurting his feelings. After that incident, Zhen Ru didn't want to talk to Sang Ji anymore. It was revealed that it turned out that Zhen Ru liked Zhen Chu and was jealous of Sang Ji who had gotten a love confession from him. In the midst of this confusion, Sang Ji was asked by his teacher to take part in sports week. Coincidentally, Sang Yan and Jiak Su were on the committee for the event because their campus was close to Sang Ji's school. With great care, Jiak Su put a hat on Sang Ji to protect her from the sun. Another concern was shown by Jiak Su, when Sang Ji repeatedly failed to do the high jump and injured her leg. Jiak Su even carried Sang Ji into the tent to be treated carefully. Sang Ji was very moved and felt that Jiak Su treated her better than her own brother. However, Sang Yan also cares about his sister. It's just that he wasn't sensitive enough to understand his sister's feelings. When Sang Ji saw Jia Su carefully helping another girl, she felt that he was indeed being kind to everyone. One day after school, Zhen Ru suddenly approached Sang Ji and asked her to go somewhere. The two of them wandered around for a long time before Zhen Ru finally said that she actually wanted to go to the internet cafe. In fact, their teacher often warned them to be careful when visiting that place because unwanted things often happen there. Jenru actually didn't want to go to the internet cafe, but she was bullied by a group of senior girls. She didn't dare to fight back and tried to trick Sang Ji by dragging her into this matter. They then searched Sang Ji's bag and threatened her, telling Sang Ji to bring money tomorrow. Of course, Sang Ji was very disappointed with Jenru and she finally understood why Jenru suddenly came to her again. Sang Ji asked Jenru to go home and explain this problem to her parents, then Sang Ji walked alone. No matter how sorry Jenru was, Sang Ji would not accept her apology anymore. Sang Ji's leg injury has not yet recovered, and because Sang Yan has something to do, he asked Jia Su for help to pick up his sister from school. Jia Su immediately looked for Sang Ji after finding out that she was not at school, and fortunately, Jia Su was able to find Sang Ji in an alley near the internet cafe. At that time, Sang Ji didn't want to tell Jia Su about her problems because she didn't want to trouble him. But Jiak Su was too upset to let this happen, and he immediately acted after finding out everything. The next day, Sang Yan, Jiak Su, and Kai Fei came to see the brats who had been bothering Sang Zhe. They were ready to fight if there were men involved, but it turned out they were just a group of girls. Sang Yan was very angry, but he didn't hurt the girls. And the problem was resolved after the girls were given a warning. After what happened, Zhen Ru was transferred to another school by her parents. Before leaving, she leaves a letter of apology for Sang Zhe, full of regret. However, Sang Ji did not say anything to her. She was very disappointed and sad because her friendship had to end in a bad way. Time passed and Sang Ji's final exam results came out. 
Even though her grades were quite satisfactory, her grade in physics is still low. Her parents sincerely advised Sang Ji to think carefully about her future. And after seeing this situation, they decided to call a tutor who could help Sang Ji with physics lessons during the winter holiday. Sang Ji is very disappointed after finding out that her tutor is her own brother. During study time, the two of them just fought and hardly did anything to study. In the end, Sang Ji's mother decided to look for someone else. But Sang Ji, who doesn't want to learn, plans that tomorrow she will sneak out. But she immediately gave up her plans after learning that the tutor who would replace her brother was Jia Xu. Before the lesson begins, Jia Xu plays games with Sang Yan and Sang Ji tries to take photos of Jia Xu secretly. Jia Xu realized this and posed, which made Sang Ji embarrassed and immediately looked for an excuse to cover up her action. They then begin to learn, and it turns out that Sang Ji doesn't know anything about physics. However, Jia Xu taught her very well. Sang Ji then asked Jia Xu why he is studying in this city. Jia Xu then explained that he wanted to be in the gaming industry and now the city had the most developed gaming industry, so he came here. During the holiday season, Jia Xu works four days a week and spends the remaining three days tutoring Sang Zhai. On one occasion, he worked too hard and became exhausted while teaching. Sang Zhi realized this allowed him to rest a little longer and carefully cover him with a coat. After giving lessons for several days, Jia Xu realized that Sang Zhi was not interested in physics, so he took Sang Zhi to the Science and Technology Museum to increase her interest in physics. This moment made Sang Zhi very happy. Apart from getting lots of lessons, she also has the opportunity to do lots of fun things with the person she likes. Later, Jia Xu shared that he wanted to make his own game and spread happiness to people. He believes that a game can help someone avoid negative things as long as it is used wisely. Sang Ji then said that she would study hard until she could find her own dream someday. After talking about the future, Sang Ji suddenly asks Jia Xu not to date. Sang Ji spoke as if she was afraid that Jia Xu's girlfriend would hinder his dreams. But besides that, she was also afraid that Jia Xu would not be nice to her anymore because Jia Xu had other priorities. But Jia Xu refuses that and instead he promises to find a gentle girlfriend and will be nice to Sang Ji. That way, there will be one more person who cares about Sang Zhai. Hearing this, Sang Ji agrees, but she asks Jia Xu to show her his future girlfriend first, and Jia Xu promises to do so. Time flies and Chinese New Year arrives. Sang Ji wanted to give Jia Xu red envelopes, but instead of money, she made New Year's greetings, folded them into little stars, put them in a red envelope, and secretly put them in Jia Xu's coat when he came to her house. Politely, Jia Xu declined Sang Ji's family's dinner invitation because he had to go back to the dormitory. Jia Xu spent New Year's Eve in the dormitory alone. While people were happy, he actually received a surprising call from the hospital, saying that his father was suffering from a lung infection and needed immediate surgery. Jia Xu returned to his hometown to solve this problem without telling anyone. And because his college term is almost over, he will return to Namu City for the graduation ceremony. After school starts again, Sang Ji receives a gift from Jia Xu. It was at that time she learned that Jia Xu had returned to his hometown. Sang Ji is very happy with Jia Xu's gift of a stuffed dog, which she thinks is very similar to Sang Yan. Sang Ji wanted to send another gift in return, but Jia Xu refused. They made an appointment over the phone to meet at the graduation ceremony, and Sang Ji will use this opportunity to give Jia Xu a gift. On the day of the graduation ceremony, Sang Ji came with her father while her mother couldn't come because she was ill. Sang Ji's eyes lit up when she saw Jia Xu wearing an academic dress. Awkwardly, Sang Ji immediately gives Jia Xu flowers. Then Jia Xu said goodbye to his classmates, and it might be difficult for them to meet again in the future. Sang Ji is afraid that she won't be able to see Jia Xu again. However, Jia Xu emphasized that he would come back to see Sang Zhai in his free time. Not wanting to miss this happy moment, Jia Xu asked his friend to take a photo of himself with Sang Ji, whom he introduced as his younger sister. Sang Ji is a little disappointed because Jia Xu only sees her as a younger sister. But she was also happy because it proved that Jia Xu was no longer a stranger in her life. Unfortunately, that day, Sang Ji didn't find the right moment to give the gift she had prepared to Jia Xu. During the party at night, everyone makes noise at the bar talking about their lives and future plans. But Jia Xu was very sad because he had to return to Yi with all the problems that were waiting for him. Jia Xu drives the drunk Sang Yan home and he plans to sleep at the hotel. But Sang Yan's mother restrained him and asked him to stay at their house. In the middle of the night, Sang Ji asked Jia Xu why he hasn't slept yet. Jia Xu didn't tell her the problem, but Sang Ji could feel that Jia Xu was unhappy. Sang Ji urges him to tell the problems. But Sang Ji also said that she would only accompany him if Jia Xu wasn't ready to tell her about his problems. Seeing that sincerity, Jia Xu told Sang Ji a little about his problem. 
He said that he owed someone a lot. Sang Ji seriously asks Jia Xu not to worry because she will help him after making money herself. Jia Xu then explained that all the debts were not Sang Ji's responsibility, and he asked Sang Ji to buy her own needs if she could earn money someday. Sang Ji, who couldn't sleep, wrote a wish on a piece of paper. She wanted to quickly make money and help Jia Xu pay off his debt. And after folding it into a little star, she put the wish paper in the milk bottle that Jia Xu had given her before. Before dawn, Jia Xu left secretly. But Sang Ji sees him from the balcony and Jia Xu waves at Sang Jai. Jia Xu texts that he has to catch an early flight and reminds Sang Ji not to forget her exams. Sang Ji continues to study hard and is now in her third year of high school. Her goal after graduation is to enter Yi University, so she can be closer to Jia Xu. But that enthusiasm was gone when Sang Ji accidentally heard the news that Jia Xu already had a girlfriend. Her heart was very broken and she actually wanted to ask Jia Xu, but she didn't have the courage. Sang Ji thinks that Jia Xu has broken his promise, a promise to introduce his girlfriend to her first. Sang Ji decides to ask Jia Xu directly, and Sang Yan is furious when he finds out that his sister has flown to Yi alone. So he immediately asks Jia Xu to pick up Sang Jai. At that time, Sang Ji said that she went to Yi to meet her online dating mate. Sang Yan and his parents were worried, but they didn't realize the real reason. Then Jia Xu appeared with a woman. Seeing this, Sang Ji had many questions in her heart. She wondered if this woman was Jia Xu's girlfriend. Sang Ji was silent until finally she cried and said that her online dating mate didn't like her and thought she was too young. It was clear that this was just Sang Ji's excuse to cover up her sadness. Jia Xu then comforts her by saying that Sang Ji will find someone better when she grows up. Hearing that, Sang Ji became even sadder and thought that when she grew up, Jia Xu would also find a woman better than her. Sang Ji went to the toilet crying. She saw that the woman was very familiar with Jia Xu, which made Sang Jai even sadder. After crying, Sang Jai returns to see Jia Xu. Meanwhile, the woman who was with Jia Xu had already left because she had work to do. Jia Xu has bought a plane ticket for Sang Ji, and he takes her out to eat before flight time. Later, Sang Ji hands Jia Xu a tie as a gift, which she previously failed to give at the graduation ceremony. Then Sang Jai secretly puts money into Jia Xu's wallet to change the plane ticket. Finally, Sang Jai handed over the teddy bear that Jia Xu had picked up on the claw machine and said that she hoped the doll would keep Jia Xu happy. Jia Xu accepted it with a smile, and they finally went their separate ways. Sang Yan picks Sang Ji up at the airport, but he doesn't scold her because he doesn't think it's the right time. Sang Ji continued to cry all the way home. Luckily, her parents tried to understand her feelings and did not immediately judge her so as not to scare her. After what happened, Sang Ji decided to move on. She put all the things related to Jia Xu into the box and said goodbye. Time passed, and finally Sang Ji was accepted at Yi University in the digital media department according to her wishes. She lived a pleasant life. She takes military training and classes and meets wonderful roommates. When one of Sang Ji's friends has a birthday, everyone celebrates at a karaoke place. At that time, Jia Xu was at the same place to attend an invitation from his colleagues. Sang Ji and Jia Xu walk in the same hallway, but neither of them notices each other. Sang Ji, who was not used to crowds, then went out to get some fresh air and that's when she met Jia Xu, who was sitting on the stairs. Jia Xu felt a little unhappy, because Sang Ji had ignored his messages all this time. Jia Xu felt that Sang Ji didn't care about him even though he didn't know what he had done wrong. Actually, Sang Ji ignored Jia Xu's message because she wanted to move on. But after meeting him again, Sang Ji reasons that she is too busy studying to get accepted into her dream university. Jia Xu accepted Sang Ji's excuse and he took her home even though he had to travel quite a distance. That night, Jia Xu said that he was alone. And when he heard the news from Sang Yan that Sang Ji was going to study in Yi, he felt very happy. The confession made Sang Ji confused and her feelings were mixed. She was even more curious because as far as she knew, Yi was Jia Xu's hometown. Besides, his family is also here and he already has a girlfriend. So how could he be lonely? After graduating from college, Jia Xu worked at a fairly well-known game company, and he was highly relied on by his company. The woman who had gone with Jia Xu to the airport, Sai Yun, also worked at the same place. Turns out, she's nothing more than Jia Xu's colleague and boss. On the other hand, Sang Ji invites Jia Xu to dinner as a thank you. Sang Ji also wanted to use this opportunity to get to know Jia Xu better, because it seemed that there were still many things she didn't know about Jia Xu. On the other hand, there's a student from the sports department who likes Sang Ji. His name is Jiang Ming. He takes Sang Ji to the movies and her roommates want to come too. 
Sangji wanted to refuse because she already had an appointment with Jia Tsu on the weekend, but she couldn't explain it because her roommates really wanted her to go to the movies. Thus, Sangji had no choice but to agree. On the other hand, a woman who really cares about Jia Tsu sends several things, but Jia Tsu always throws them away. Apparently, Jia Tsu owed the woman something and after paying it off, Jia Tsu asked her not to contact him anymore. The woman was Xiao Ying, and she felt very sad, because Jia Tsu continued to ignore her messages. On weekends, Sang Ji prefers to meet with Jia Tsu, just like her initial plan. However, Jia Tsu seems to have to cancel this appointment. Sang Ji felt that Jia Tsu was not feeling well, so she hurriedly asked for his office address and rushed to meet him. Jia Tsu's face was so pale because his stomach hurts. Sang Ji immediately called a taxi, and she accidentally crashed into Jia Xu on the side of the road until Jia Xu accidentally kissed Sang Ji's forehead. It turns out, Jia Xu suffered from appendicitis and decided to proceed with surgery. Meanwhile, Sang Ji waits outside and at the same time, her mother calls. And after telling the situation, Sang Ji learns some stories about Jia Xu's past. Sang Ji's mother had never mentioned this matter before that in the past, Jia Su once borrowed money from their family to pay for the treatment of his sick mother. Jia Su continued to work hard until he could pay off his debt within six months. But in the end, his mother died. Sang Ji almost cried after hearing this story and she finally understood why Jia Su is always busy working. After the operation is complete, Jia Su urges Sang Ji to go home immediately and not worry about him. But after that, Jia Su kept thinking about the previous incident when he accidentally kissed Sang Ji's forehead. After some time, Sang Yan called to express his concern, but in a nonchalant manner. At that time, Jia Su wanted to explain something to Sang Yan, but he thought better of it. Apparently, Sang Ji couldn't afford to leave Jia Su until she decided to accompany him. Sang Ji believes that Jia Su would do the same if she was sick, because Jia Su was unable to get out of bed. Sang Ji offered to help him wipe his face before going to sleep, and Sang Ji did it with great attention. The next day, Jia Xu asks Sang Ji to get his laptop at his house, but Sang Ji refuses and says that Jia Xu have to rest. Hearing Sang Ji grumbling made Jia Xu realize that the girl was indeed an adult. After finishing her activities in class, Sang Ji went to Jia Xu's house to take some clothes. At that time, Sang Ji didn't expect Jia Xu still have a photo with her at his graduation. And after seeing a photo of Jia Xu's mother, Sang Ji introduced herself. Then, Xiao Ying came right after Sang Ji left, and she didn't know that Jia Xu is being treated in hospital and currently, the house is empty. Sang Ji returns to the hospital and brings Jia Xu's laptop. However, she warned him not to work too hard. The old man beside Jia Xu's bed thought that Sang Ji was Jia Xu's wife. But Jia Xu then explains that Sang Ji is his younger sister. However, the old man apparently couldn't hear well and still thought that they were a perfect couple. Jack Su agreed with his words and responded with a joke. But apparently, Sang Ji was not happy with this joke. She always hides her feelings carefully, but Jack Su easily made a joke about it. Sang Ji thought that maybe for Jack Su, they'll have no relationship other than brother and sister. That is why Jack Su can make jokes like that. After returning home from the hospital, Sang Ji was so attentive that she made lots of notes for Jack Su to maintain his diet. After leaving, Sang Ji comforts herself and accepts the fact that she is just a little sister for Jia Su. Besides that, Jia Su notices that Sang Ji changes her attitude and he's worried that she will be angry. After telling it to Sai Yun, she suggested Jia Su ask Sang Ji to have dinner together and also discuss this matter. Sang Ji couldn't refuse when Jia Su asked her to have dinner on New Year's Eve. Jia Su apologized to Sang Ji for the joke he had made at the hospital, but Sang Ji said that it was not a big problem. Then they were chatting about many things, but Xiao Ying happened to see them as she was angry. She splashed Jia Xu and felt that he had ignored her. Sang Ji couldn't accept this, so she splashed Xiao Ying too. And it made Xiao Ying even more furious. In fact, Xiao Ying said that Jia Xu owes her a lifetime debt. In the end, Xiao Ying was dragged away by her friend and the cafe workers. Sang Ji helps Jia Xu wipe the water on his face and asks who the woman is. But Jia Xu just explained that his father owed the woman money. Sang Ji remembers that she once ran into her and is worried that she will continue to pester her. Jia Xu, seeing how Sang Ji cared so much about him, made him moved. The door to his heart seemed to be knocked and he was very grateful. It snowed that night and Sang Ji secretly made a wish. She hoped Jia Xu kept away from unpleasant things and hoped that he could be by her side. Jia Xu did the same thing. He made a wish and hoped that Sang Ji would always be happy and healthy. After Jia Xu arrived at his house, Xiao Ying was already waiting for him and apologized for her actions at the cafe earlier. She is still mad because Jia Xu ignored her, 
and she demanded accountability for past events. The scene then shows Jiak Xu in the past, at that time he's a high school student. Xiao Ying was his and her classmate attracted to him. Until one day, Xiao Ying's father died due to an accident caused by Jiak Xu's father. Jiak Xu's family tried to make amends by paying compensation money determined by the court. Jiak Xu's mother also promised that her family would take care of Xiao Ying. But when Jiak Xu tries to be nice to Xiao Ying, she's always ignored him. Things got worse when Jiak Xu's mother died and he barely had time to pay attention to Xiao Ying because he was busy working. Apparently, Xiao Ying still liked Jiak Xu, but her love slowly turned into obsession. She demanded Jiak Xu to love her as a form of responsibility for incidents in the past. And because of that, Jiak Xu doesn't like it. After what happened, Jiak Xu felt better after seeing Sang Ji's photo, which somehow gave him peace. He watched the fireworks on the roof and texting with Sang Ji, who was also enjoying the excitement of New Year's Eve. On one occasion, Xiao Yang caused a commotion at Jiak Su's company. At the same time, Sang Ji comes to the office and meets with Jiak Su, which really worries her. Jiak Su firmly asked Sang Ji to let him know before meeting him at the office or at home. He was afraid that Sang Ji would run into Xiao Yang and might hurt her. But Sang Ji thought that Jiak Su didn't like it if she immediately came to see him like this. That day, Sang Ji came to the office to give the smart bell to Jiak Su. With this bell, he could find out who came to visit his house so he could anticipate Xiao Ying who kept bothering him. Another attention was again knocking on Jiak Su's heart, which slowly began to open up to Sang Jai. Time continues to pass, the process of the game design in Jiak Su's company went well, and during this time he was very busy. Towards the end of the semester, Sang Ji kept thinking about Jiak Su and hoped he would get an explanation soon. After the exam, Sang Ji invites her friends to relax and they all agree. Jiang Ming sings a love song on stage for Sang Jai, but she ignored it. When Jiak Su called, a slightly drunk Sang Ji said that she was at the bar with her friends and Jiak Su rushed to pick her up. Seeing Sang Ji coming out of the bar, Jiang Ming immediately followed her. So Jiak Su came just when Jiang Ming was trying to help Sang Jai, who had drunk too much. Jiak Su immediately took over and Jiang Ming had no choice but to leave after Sang Ji said that Jiak Su is her older brother. Sang Ji, who was drunk, started to feel nauseous, so she vomited in front of Jiak Su. That night, Sang Jai reveals a secret that she likes someone. But Sang Ji didn't say who it was. Only, she explained that the guy was nice to all the women, and that made her sad. Jiak Su didn't know who the person Sang Ji was talking about was, but he felt uncomfortable with the confession. Jiak Su drove Sang Ji back to the dormitory, and the next day, Sang Ji woke up upset thinking about what happened yesterday, especially when she accidentally vomited in front of Jiak Su. Her roommates were very excited They often heard stories about Jiak Su, but never thought that he was that handsome. Sang Ji then decided to return to Nanwu during the end of semester holidays. She had already bought a ticket and Jiak Su, who knew about this, came to Sang Ji's dormitory to take her to the airport. While Sang Ji is loading her luggage into the car, Jiang Ming suddenly comes to talk to her and expresses his feelings. Sang Ji was confused, but then she remembered Jiak Su's advice about how to properly reject other people's feelings. Jiang Ming accepted Sang Ji's rejection gracefully after Sang Ji thanked him and explained that she already liked someone. Jiak Su watches everything from a distance and thinks that the man is the person Sang Ji likes. Strangely, he looks jealous all the way to the airport, and this is proof that he is starting to like Sang Ji. Long story short, Sang Ji spent her holiday at home. Meanwhile, Kan Fei comes to have dinner with Jiak Su on his first business trip in Yi. Jiak Su told a little about his romance and said that he was attracted to a young girl who unfortunately already likes someone. Jiak Su explains that the girl likes men who are nice to all women. Suddenly, Kian Fei said that the man was referring to as Jiak Su. Kian Fei then explains that maybe the guy the girl likes is Jiak Su because he is also nice to all the girls. Jiak Su denied it at first, but then he decided to find out. One day, Jiak Su went to Nanwu to attend Kian Fei's wedding. Stang Ji is surprised to see Jiak Su wearing the tie she gave him. And throughout the meeting, Jiak Su always jokingly claimed that Sang Yan was his older brother. This makes Sang Jai even more confused. And actually, Jiak Su used this opportunity to find out Sang Ji's feelings, so he observed Sang Ji's every behavior. Seeing that Sang Ji often misbehaves and makes inconsistent excuses, Jiak Su thinks that Sang Ji is indeed interested in him. After eating, Sang Yan refused to go home. Unwillingly, Sang Ji says goodbye to everyone, but Jiak Su offers to take her home. That night for the first time, Jiak Su called Sang Ji by her nickname, Zhizhi. This made Sang Ji stunned for a moment. After taking Sang Ji home, Jiak Su gives her a bracelet with Sang Ji's initials engraved on it as a New Year's gift. 
Jiang Xu's gaze seemed unusual that night, making Sang Ji wonder what happened to him. Sang Ji then finds out about the meaning of giving bracelets, but she is disappointed after reading an article which states that it is only a form of attention from older people. And because of that, she didn't want to wear it. Besides, Jiang Xu struggled all night to get the same flight ticket as Sang Ji, so he can return to Yi with her. At the airport, Jiang Xu meets his high school classmate, who accidentally mentions Xiao Ying and says that Jiang Xu is dating her. Jiang Xu immediately denies it, and Sang Ji pretends to be casual when she asked about it. She finally knew that Xiao Ying was the woman who had splashed Jiang Xu at the cafe. However, Jiang Xu explains that if he had a girlfriend, he would introduce her to Sang Ji first. Hearing those words, Sang Ji was shocked and realized that Jiang Xu never forgot his promise. Then Sang Ji asked about the woman Jiang Xu had brought to the airport at that time. Then Jiang Xu smiled when he saw Sang Ji looking jealous and shy. He was increasingly convinced that the girl really liked him. Feeling confident, Jiang Xu decides to go after Sang Ji first. She accepts all advice from his friends about how to win a woman's heart. The first step he had to take was to bring Sang Ji together with Sai Yun, the woman he had taken to the airport. And after they met, Sang Ji found out that Jiang Xu had never dated and Sai Yun was nothing more than a workmate. Apparently, Jiak Xu asked Sai Yun for help to explain everything to Sang Ji so that she wouldn't misunderstand. After that, Jiak Xu took Sang Ji to the cinema. However, the first date didn't go smoothly when Sang Ji accidentally drank a drink containing milk and caused her allergy to flare up. Jiak Xu immediately changed her drink, and for the rest of the day, Sang Ji had a rash that required her to be taken to the hospital. After giving medicine to Sang Ji, Jiak Xu remembers that he once gave her milk. Sang Ji lies, she said that she gave the milk to her friend. In the dorm, everyone waits for updates from Sang Ji about her first date. The date didn't go smoothly, but Sang Ji was happy because Jia Xu seemed to like her. Anyway, Sang Ji's friends are happy. They have been following Sang Ji's love story, so after this, they try to guide Sang Ji in matters of love. On her birthday, Sang Ji dresses up beautifully to meet Jia Xu. They go to spend time together. On the bus, Jiak Xu always looks after Sang Ji and offers Sang Ji to hold his hand so that she doesn't fall. They go to the cinema to watch a film they failed to watch last time. Jiak Xu shows all kinds of attention to Sang Ji and it makes her very happy. Sang Ji is surprised when Jiak Xu invites her to his house. She still remembers Jiak Xu's words not to come to see him at the office or his home. Then Jiak Xu quickly explained that he just didn't want Sang Ji to run into Xiao Ying who might hurt her. And because of that, he asked Sang Ji to let him know where she wanted to see him. Sang Ji understands and she accepts Jia Xu's invitation to come to his house. It turns out Jia Xu has prepared a birthday surprise on the roof of his house as well as a birthday cake specially prepared for Sang Ji. That night, Sang Ji was very happy because it was her first birthday with Jia Xu. She hoped to celebrate it again in the future together with Jia Xu. On the other hand, Jia Xu prepares a gift for Sang Ji and asks her to open it after coming home. Jiak Su realizes that Sang Ji is liked by many people, so he asks how to win her heart. Sang Ji explains that the person must be handsome, kind, taller than her, and have the same views. Jiak Su then asked if he could chase Sang Ji. Hearing the question, Sang Ji was nervous and wondered whether Jiak Su meant what he said. But Jiak Su looked serious, and he didn't want to just be a brother to Sang Ji. Jiak Su also explains that he asked for permission like this, so that Sang Ji wouldn't be confused by all the good attitudes he would show. Sang Ji is doubtful and she just says that Jiak Su can chase her. Sang Ji blushed even more when Jiak Su complimented her and said that Sang Ji looked beautiful today. The situation was really nice, until finally Sang Ji came home bringing Jiak Su's cake to her dormitory. And apparently, her friends have prepared a surprise for her birthday. Sang Ji gets a small camera as a gift from Jiak Su and she really likes it. That night, Sang Ji tells her brother that she might be dating someone. Sang Yan, who was busy managing the bar, only warned Sang Ji be careful. But after hearing that his younger sister was dating someone older, he couldn't calm down and immediately advised her. Sang Ji accepts her friend's suggestion to test Jiak Su by not immediately accepting his invitation to date. If Jiak Su continues to look for ways to meet her, then Sang Ji will accept his invitation. But Jiak Su's busy life seemed to be the main reason they rarely saw each other. Through this incident, Sang Ji begins to doubt Jiak Su's feelings. Until one day, Jia Xu again had to cancel his date with Sang Zhai. This time, it wasn't because of work, but Jia Xu had to go to the hospital to see the condition of his father who was in a coma due to an accident several years ago. The scene shows a flashback. That night, after accidentally bumping into Xiao Ying's father, instead of taking responsibility, Jia Xu's father chose to run away. 
His family asked him to turn himself into the police, but he didn't want to listen and went jumping into a fairly high window. Jiao Xu's life was destroyed instantly. His helpless father was in a coma in the hospital, and his mother was forced to continue working day and night to earn a living and Jiao Xu's youth was spent studying while working. His suffering continued when his mother fell ill and eventually died. After visiting his father, Jiao Xu returned home with a tired face. Even though he really wanted to rest, he chose to go to Sang Ji's dormitory, and thought that was his only chance to meet Sang Jai. Jia Xu often misses appointments, but Sang Ji is mature enough to understand and tolerate it. As a form of support, when they meet, Sang Ji buys cotton candy for Jia Xu and says that if he eats this candy, it will make him happy. This was the first time Jia Xu had such sweet support from someone, and he was very grateful. When Sang Ji attends an open seminar at her campus, Jia Xu secretly comes to participate. Sang Ji was so nervous when Jia Xu kept looking at her that she pretended to be asleep and closed her eyes. Jia Xu brought his face closer to Sang Ji's face and poked her cheek. Sang Ji thinks Jia Xu kissed her without warning, and Jia Xu deliberately asked what she did just now. Instead of answering with words, Sang Ji asked Jia Xu to come closer and kissed him on the cheek. Shyly, Sang Ji says that even though she has done this, she still doesn't want to accept it. Jia Xu continued to tease her for the rest of the class, and after that, the two of them went for a walk around campus. The holidays are coming soon. Sang Ji decides to stay in Yi and look for an internship to improve her experience. Sang Yan, who knew this, didn't allow it because he was worried that his sister would waste her time dating. Even though Sang Ji doesn't want to go home because she wants to be with Jia Xu, she is also seriously about improving her experiences by joining an internship program. Sang Ji prepared a birthday surprise for Jia Xu at a restaurant. She borrowed the kitchen to make a traditional food called Long Life Noodles. Jia Xu liked it very much and enjoyed it. Then he closed his eyes and made a wish. Sang Ji knows what his wish is and says that it will come true easily because now she agreed to date him. They looked at each other and became lost in the romance they had just started. Sang Ji feels that today is very special because it is Jia Xu's birthday and also their first day together. Jia Xu explains his family situation to Sang Ji that he had never told before. Jia Xu is afraid that the problem he is facing now might make Sang Ji unhappy, but Sang Ji denies that she doesn't mind at all. She also promised to always be by Jia Xu's side. At the end of semester, Sang Ji starts looking for a place to do an internship. One day, the electricity in Sang Ji's dormitory went out. Because of this, Jia Xu invites Sang Ji to his house and helps her study. Not only that, Jia Xu also prepared food for Sang Ji with great care. In return, Sang Ji washed all the dirty dishes. That evening, Jia Xu took Sang Ji home while holding her hand tightly. He feels proud of their relationship, and for the first time, Sang Ji can say out loud that she really likes Jia Xu. A simple sentence, but it takes a lot of courage to express it. On that happy night, while talking to Kain Fei on the phone, Jia Xu told him everything. Jia Xu expressed his gratitude because Kain Fei's guidance could help him find true love. Kain Fei is very surprised to find out that Jia Xu is dating Sang Ji and hurriedly hangs up the call. One certain thing is, Kain Fei advises Jia Xu to immediately explain everything to Sang Yan. On the other hand, Jia Xu's relationship with Sang Ji is getting closer. They both made time to meet each other in the midst of their busy lives. Not only that, they also care about each other and also tease each other. Sometimes they also feel jealous of each other. And finally, the end of semester holiday arrived. Sang Ji's parents didn't want their daughter to live in Yi alone. In fact, they helped Sang Ji find an internship in Nanwo. But Sang Ji insisted on staying in Yi. Then Sang Jai receives good news that she passed the interview for an internship at an advertising company. On her first day of work, Sang Ji doesn't know that her department head is Xiao Yu, Xiao Ying's friend. In this situation, Xiao Yu thinks that Sang Ji is her friend's enemy, so she doesn't treat Sang Jai well. On the first day of her internship, Sang Ji was displeased, but she hid that fact from her parents. Unexpectedly, Jia Xu specially brought a bouquet of flowers for Sang Ji and then invited her to dinner together as a form of support on her first day of work. As time passed, even though Sang Ji continued to get pressure from Xiao Yu, she did not give up and tried to do her best at her job. Sang Ji felt a lot of comfort when she met Jia Xu. Leading in Jia Xu's arms was enough to restore her lost energy. One time, Jia Xu took Sang Ji to the office and they looked so intimate. Xiao Yu happened to see this scene as she was passing by. Then, she told Xiao Ying about it and thought that Sang Ji snatched Jia Xu from her. This news made Xiao Ying unhappy, so she tried to meet Sang Ji at all costs. When the two of them finally met, Xiao Ying explained Jia Xu's real situation and said that he is the son of a murderer and has many responsibilities, especially to take care of his father who is in a coma.
with expensive medical costs every year. She also claims that Jiak Shu didn't get enough love because of his family. So he will easily interpret people's kindness as love. Xiao Ying thinks that Sang Ji will stay away from Jiak Shu after hearing this fact, but she is totally wrong. Sang Ji has known Jiak Shu many years ago, and during that time, she has developed her feelings for him. Her love is not temporary attraction, but it's a feeling of affection and readiness to accept all of his shortcomings. Apart from that, Sang Ji believes that Jia Su has nothing to do with the death of Xiao Ying's father, and there is no reason to blame him. Sang Ji understands Xiao Ying's feelings, and because of that, she doesn't judge her. Sang Ji hopes that Xiao Ying will soon realize that she's on the wrong path. When she met Jia Su, Sang Ji didn't tell him what happened. She took the bread from Jia Su and then gave him a bank card of her savings. Sang Ji said that as a good girlfriend, she wanted to do the best for her boyfriend. Actually, Jiak Su didn't refuse it, but he gave it back to Sang Ji and asked her to buy everything she wanted. Then both of them agreed not to use the money carelessly, and Sang Ji was mature enough to think about buying a house together in the future. On one occasion, Jiak Su took Sang Ji home after she worked overtime. Suddenly, Sang Ji's mother called to ask about her condition. And then Sang Yan called Sang Ji, and he turned out to be secretly following Jiak Su and Sang Jai. Sang Yan made the atmosphere very tense because it seemed he didn't like this situation. Sang Ji tried to explain carefully before finally, Jia Su took over and explained their relationship to Sang Yan, who still had a cold face. After taking Sang Ji to her dormitory, Sang Yan asked Jia Su to talk in private. Sang Ji worried, but Jia Su said that everything will be okay. In a quiet place, Sang Yan let go of all the emotions he was holding back and punched Jia Su. He continued to hit him several times, and Jia Su didn't do any resistance. Sang Yan asked Jia Su, among all the girls, why Jia Su should date his sister. But Jia Su convinced Sang Yan that he's serious with Sang Jai. In the end, Sang Yan can't say anything, but his heart is still angry. He's just afraid that his sister will get hurt, and that will definitely have an impact on his friendship with Jia Su. Sang Yan calmed his emotions and took Jia Su away for treatment. On the way, Jia Su promised Sang Yan that he would treat Sang Ji well for the rest of his life. Jiak Su repeatedly said that he's serious with this relationship and they are only five years apart. At Jiak Su's house, Sang Yan didn't say that he approved their relationship and only warned Jiak Su about the consequences that he would get if his sister was hurt. The next day, Jiak Su wore a mask to hide his wound from Sang Jai, but he still cannot hide it. Sang Ji knew that this was her brother's doing, so she angrily came to him at a cafe. Jiak Su persuades Sang Ji to talk with her brother. They were mad at each other, but then made up awkwardly. However, Sang Yan did all this because he cared about his sister, but he couldn't show it in a gentle way. After that, Jiak Su went to his company and Sang Yan insisted on accompanying him to work at the office. On that unexpected day, Sang Yan revealed that he was very worried about his sister's relationship, but on the other hand, he felt relieved knowing that Sang Ji's boyfriend was Jiak Su, and he knew about Jiak Su's character and personality well. On the next day, Sang Yan went home because he had to manage his bar. Jiak Shu accidentally got words from someone who saw Xiao Ying speak with Sang Jiai. Then Jiak Su immediately met Xiao Ying with a warning letter from the police. Jiak Su warned Xiao Ying if she meets his girlfriend again, then he will bring this case into legal action. Jiak Su will not never let anyone hurt Sang Ji and will do anything for her. At the office, Sang Ji has the courage to put forward her own ideas at a meeting. Even though Xiao Yu didn't agree, the leader really liked Sang Ji's ideas and asked the team to consider it. Because of that, Xiao Yu hated Sang Ji more and more. She felt she had been humiliated at the meeting and accuses Sang Ji of stealing someone's boyfriend. But Sang Ji never never tells Jia Xu about it, as long as she can handle it herself. She doesn't want to burden her boyfriend who is already very busy working. Jia Xu realizes that, but he also wants to be a reliable boyfriend and asks Sang Ji to share her problems if it feels very hard. Jia Xu rented a house with two bedrooms near Sang Ji's campus, so he can meet Sang Ji more often. However, he bought the house not to live together with Sang Jai. If Sang Ji feels tired, he thinks that this house can be a place to rest for her. Jiak Su handing over the key to Sang Ji and showing that this house will be hers in the future. Coincidentally, not long after that, the aircon in Sang Ji's place broke down, so she was forced to stay at Jiak Su's house for a while. A lot of sweet things happen between them while they're living together, and the most important thing is that they know each other's limits. Jiak Su's project made great progress. After staying up all night and working overtime this year, the game he developed with his team was finally launched and got a lot of positive response. Meanwhile, on her last day of internship, Sang Ji specially gave a farewell gift to Xiao Yu and stated that she did not steal anyone's boyfriend. 
She also advised Xiao Yu to accompany Xiao Ying to go to a psychiatrist who could help her and Xiao Yu will find out what was really going on. After college started, Sang Ji planned to participate in a university design competition. And during the national holiday, she went home to Nanwu because her parents really missed her. At her house, Sang Ji's mother overheard her daughter calling someone intimately and not realizing that it was Jia Su. Sang Ji's father was very worried and immediately asked about their relationship. But Sang Ji was afraid to admit it and worried that her parents might be against her relationship with Jia Su. Therefore, Sang Ji avoided this conversation. On one occasion, Sang Ji joined a dinner party with Sang Yan and his friends, and that means she will meet Jia Su. At that party, Jia Su reveals his relationship with Sang Ji. Then another news comes from Kyan Fei, who will soon be a father. Everyone congratulates him and has fun. While Sang Yan spent the rest of his time at the party, Jia Su took Sang Ji home and the two of them looked so perfect. But Sang Ji's mother saw that, so she immediately asked her daughter about the relationship. Even though she knew that Jia Su was a good person, but his family background was the main problem and made her worry. Then Jia Su planned to meet Sang Ji's parents. However, Sang Ji's father asked Jia Su first to have a private meeting when Sang Ji wasn't at home. When they met, Sang Ji's father explained everything to Jia Su carefully. Actually, he was afraid that his daughter would be dragged into Jia Su and Xiao Ying's family problems, which might have an impact on Sang Zhai. So Sang Ji's father just wanted to convey his concerns as a parent because he wants the best for his daughter and hopes that Jia Su can seriously consider their future. When Sang Zhai returns home, she finally finds out that her parents have spoken to Jia Su. They want Sang Ji to rethink her relationship and advise her to break up. Sang Ji was silent, realizing that Jia Chu's family background is the main problem why her parents are against their relationship. And she feels sad for Jia Xu because family is not something he can choose. Jia Xu's feelings became complicated after his meeting with Sang Ji's father. Worried that Jia Xu would be depressed, Sang Ji called him in hopes that he wouldn't be sad. Jia Xu's eyes reddened and asked Sang Ji to spend her time with her parents while he was going back to Yi to meet a client. Sang Ji is afraid that her relationship with Jia Su will end, so she took a big step to follow him. She understands her parents' concerns, but she is an adult now and very sure of what she wants. After getting off the plane, Jia Su immediately picked Sang Ji up at the airport. At that time, Sang Ji told Jia Su that when she was in high school, she never looked for an online boyfriend. At that time, she came to the airport to meet Jia Su after getting the news that he had a boyfriend. Then she explained why she kept ignoring Jia Su's messages until she went to college. Sang Ji showed her written hopes about how she liked Jia Su. By confessing all her secrets, Sang Ji hopes that Jia Su believes that she really loves him. So he doesn't need to listen to what people say about their relationship. Sang Ji thinks that Jia Su is considering breaking up with her, but actually Jia Su is thinking about what they should do in the future so they can be together forever. As for Sang Ji's parents' concerns, Jia Su was looking for the right time to explain to them. Jia Su took a big step in his life, he resigned from the company and returned to Nanwu to start his own company. Then he got a call from the hospital regarding his father's condition getting worse. Jia Su didn't know what to say to his father. He only regretted his father's actions and told him what had happened to their family all this time. Maybe, Jia Su's life would be much better if his father didn't avoid his responsibility. After going through a lot of trouble, Jia Su understands what responsibility is, and now he can protect his loved ones. Jia Xu asked his father to rest in peace so he can apologize to Jia Xu's mother and go to heaven. Jia Xu's father moves his finger, and then he passes away. After hearing this news, Sang Ji was very worried about her boyfriend. But Jia Xu said calmly that such a day would happen sooner or later, but still he turned his head and cried in Sang Ji's arms. Since then, he was alone without his father and mother. In his mother's grave, Jia Xu told her that his father had gone and hoped they could live happily there. Sang Jia reveals that Jia Su is a good person and she promises to protect him, to continue to be by his side and love him with all her heart so that he doesn't feel alone. For the sake of their future, Jia Su has to go back to Nanwu earlier to prepare his own business. Meanwhile, Sang Ji must finish her studies in Mi. It felt hard for them to be apart, but it was the best way. Sang Ji was busy participating in design competitions on her campus, while Jia Su started looking for an office and building his studio step by step. After looking for the right time, Jia Xu visited Sang Ji's parents. After having lunch together, Jia Xu had the courage to express his thoughts. Jia Xu understands their worries as parents, but he also sincerely loves Sang Zhai. Jia Xu said that his future might be different if it's not because Sang Ji is always by his side and helps him get out from his sorrowful past. He said that now he doesn't have many things, but he will use everything he has to make Sang Ji happy. 
saying she's parents don't care about anything other than her daughter's happiness. And because of Jiaxu's sincerity, they finally approved their relationship. Sang Yan sincerely hopes that his sister's relationship will go well, and Jiaxu is very grateful to him for all the support he has given him so far. On the other hand, Sang Ji was very happy after knowing that her parents had given their blessing. Another good news came from Sang Ji's design project that won the award. Jiaxu lively told Sang Ji that he was very busy and couldn't accompany her at the award ceremony. In fact, he was present at the event as a senior representative who would present the award to the participants. This surprise made Sang Ji very happy and she couldn't stop looking at Jia Su while standing together on the stage. Two years later, Sang Ji and her friends graduated from college. Everyone came to the beach to celebrate it. On that day, Sang Ji helped with her friend's wedding proposal who had been dating for a long time. But she didn't realize that it was actually a proposal prepared by Jia Su for Sang Ji. Jack Xu also invited Sang Yan and his parents. He had thought about many things and finally chose to surprise Sang Jai in this way. On that happy day, Jiaf Su revealed that he had previously thought that it was okay for him to live alone. But after meeting Sang Ji, he realized that loving and being loved is something pleasant. With the blessings of family and friends, Jiaf Su knelt down and proposed to Sang Ji with a diamond ring. Sang Ji said yes, and everyone cheered for such happiness. After that, Jiaf Su told a little secret to Sang Ji saying that he also secretly liked her. When it snowed and Sang Ji was in her first year of college, that's when Jia Su fell in love with her. Their love story began when Jia Su was 22 years old. Sang Ji hid her feelings and didn't let anyone know. She tried to be better until she finally realized that she was not alone because Jia Su also ran towards her. For five years, Sang Ji healed Jia Su's wounds from the past. Jia Su met his first love who was still young. And this love story ended happily when Sang Ji was 22 years old. Some people say that love isn't about age, but it's still a taboo thing because people like to judge. A maturity cannot be measured by age likewise with love. True love will hear what is not said and understand what is not explained because love comes from our deepest heart. A perfect couple will understand and accept each other.